Um, Tiago, I'm probably going to mute myself and turn off the camera during your presentation. Okay, no worries. I'll, I'll turn on the camera if I want to interrupt you. I guess you're looking at my video feed right now, right? Uh, actually, I'm seeing you. Yeah. Just you. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. So yeah. if I oh, go okay. like this, okay. that just means I want to ask a question. Okay. But it basically means finish your thought. Okay. Right? Don't, don't feel like I'm interrupting you. It's just me saying whenever you're ready. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Give me an opportunity and then I'll unmute myself. But that rarely happens. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying I think that's a good way to do it because you see me anyway. Okay. Cool. Yeah, uh, and I'll be on Slack if there's anything you want me to... <laughs> if you want to send me anything oh, silently. Okay, let me make sure that I'm... Yeah, okay, sweet. I'll go... I'll see where you are. So the actual... I want to figure out where the actual piece of document is here. Over there. Perfect. Uh, okay, we, we're still waiting for that, by the way. Stop looking around, no one else? He's coming to you. He sent me an email. Okay. Hey! Welcome. We want to sit here? Here? Hey. I encourage people to get their coffee now. Hot. Yes, please, please okay. pick up coffee and bagels and things like this. Are you guys in the new uh, general space? Yeah. We're in the new, we're on some space on 11th floor. Okay, okay, so, so not, like, okay. We're, we're like, as you know, no one knows where anything is in this building. I don't know that because it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, you should come over, I can show you how to get lost, it's very easy. It's, uh, uh, I have other, I have other other high priorities in my life right now <laughs> that do not involve traveling at all. Yeah, that makes sense. What well, that are you you in this building now as well? No. No, you you're back at you're at five. I'm I'm in five, but I spend a lot of time on the thirteenth. Here, yeah. Yes. Yeah. We, we 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 have we moved my office is next to the lab and it's beautiful and everything is spanking new and everything okay. and nothing is what we expect it would be and very few things work. Ah, that's that's a problem. Yeah. It, it's only that a problem. Sounds like, like uh, magnet. Yeah. Sounds yeah. like magnet all over again. Yeah. 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 Can I get you anything nice. like water or <laughs> ginger ale or anything like that? Mm -hmm. So yeah, remind you, you can bring me water. The, um, perfect. You want sure. Here. Thank you. Great. Right back. Hey Julian, you got you got like some very special thanks in the mutazione credits. Really? Nice. Yeah. There's so, only like six people who got very special thanks. Nice. I actually lent the money. That's, that's why. probably why. That, maybe that's why. <laughs> yeah, that's it. it was I was basically... assuming it was because you were super nice about Christopher's involvement in the game during his postdoc and his PhD, but that's also that could also be. Because <laughs> they've been working on this game for like a decade, right? Yeah, yeah, or at least five years. I haven't, I, I haven't downloaded, I downloaded it yesterday, but I haven't fired it up yet. But got to do right. it. It's definitely. Well, the Apple Arcade released eighty games today. Oh. Eight. Eight zero. Eight zero. Eight zero. Yeah. It's like a Apple Arcade. Yeah, iOS thirteen updated a couple of hours ago. And Apple Arcade is uh, their subscription service. Oh, yeah. And they released, I think, something like eighty games all at once. Hey, hey Dan. <laughs> hey. Uh, yeah, it's a bad day to release a game, I guess. It's a really bad day to release a game. Yeah, yeah. Well, Unless well, you're part of that crowd. I mean, I mean, I hope Mutaciona does well because it looks super interesting, because I like all the people involved, I feel like close to the game, also because I want my money back. But it's getting very favorable reviews. Oh, that's great. Very, very favorable reviews. That's great. I'm liking it a lot. Hey, Julie. Hey, hey. This is like, this is like all these people that we've seen here a while. It's great. Um, Okay, um, so uh, it's four something, right? Exactly four. Uh, one minute. Technically, we have one minute. Better. Yeah, no, so I'm looking forward to playing some Mutacion over the weekend. Also, also got back into. What? It says 101 on my clock. I don't oh. know if the clocks go differently in California, but. Okay. Okay, well, great. <laughs> sure. Also, streaming live for whoever's watching. Okay, so yeah, so are, you, are we still streaming now? Yeah. Okay. Hi, hi world. Um, 
Wait, do you guys have a, a Game Innovation Lab Twitch channel, or where is the streaming? Did, it's on YouTube. Did you oh, put it on Twitch or something like this? Uh, I did not share it out. Okay, should we do it? So we'll, why don't we share it, I think? Uh, yeah, let me see if the link I sent works. <laughs> Give me a minute. <clears throat> okay, um, while you do this, uh, we'll kick this off. So, um, welcome everyone to Tiago Machado's PhD Defense. Um, and Andy Neelum, who um, um, is joining us on Skype from California for the last four years. So, um, he's presenting his work here today. Um, the committee is myself, Julian Tegelius, Andy Neelum, Skype from California, Alessandro Canossa from the Danish Design School, and Odette Nog from uh, here in Tato. Um uh, the order of the day is that um, Tiago gives a public talk of around 40 minutes where he presents his, um, his research. After that we have public questions, which means anyone in here can ask questions um, and um, well, Tiago can answer. Um, um, otherwise it wouldn't be much sense to do it. And after that, we'll go to a closed session. So the rest of the, so with only the defendant, the candidate, and the, and the committee in the room, and then we'll deliver a verdict. So we're planning for the whole process to take for sure less than two hours, but um, we'll see exactly how much. Good. And with that, um, yeah, the floor is yours. So uh, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, it's good to see you all here and so yes this is my PhD defense uh, as you may know my name is Thiago uh, Julia is my supervisor and for this presentation we'll have so in this book parts it's more about the the research topics the introduction and motivation the background of this research uh, the methods that we use it uh, in orange you have more of the technical stuff, uh, the systems that we designed, and in pink uh, the system evaluation, and then uh, we will come to the conclusions. Uh, yes, and during this presentation we will have some demos, uh, if everything works, if it doesn't crash, and some videos as well. So uh, game development is hard. And why? Because it has an increasing complexity. So first uh, we have graphics, and then uh, we have to design uh, and implement the physics of the games. Then we started to have uh, multiplayer games, and then we had to design uh, network systems to support these, these systems. Uh, then we had social media, and then we had to implement social media components to support the games and the user needs. And this we are just talking about the engineering part. There is still art and design and a lot of other things that make a game possible. And to us do the academics say? So uh, this guy, uh, he wrote a paper about the problems in the game industry. So it's, this is one of those papers that you send to those people that say that their dream is to work with games. Uh, this one, uh, he, it, is, uh, it is written by Jonathan Blow, he's a, a famous ga game designer and he's talking exactly about the complexities of uh, game engineering. And we also have a very segmented market nowadays, so we have games for uh, PC, uh, mobile phones, uh, virtual reality, uh, game consoles. So because of that, the tools, uh, they can and they need to be better. So uh, and speaking about tools, uh, this paper is uh, a paper about uh, investigating how the tools, the game design tools are used in the market. And the, the people who gave interviews to, to this paper, they say that uh, the status of the tools nowadays is one of the main uh, setbacks that lead projects to delays. So in this paradigm, uh, we have AI-assisted game design. That are tools powered by AI able to assist uh, in a myriad of uh, game design tasks. But are these tools a solution? Well, at least they bring two uh, conundrums. 
the first of them is the lack of generalities and then the lack of user studies. By lack of generalities, I mean, for example, we have this tool uh, that was designed to generate levels for our game, that is a classical video game. But the point is that if you are trying to use uh, such a tool to another game, uh, it will not work. You have to design everything from scratch. And by lack of user studies is that you don't have a substantial amount of user studies that indicates that these tools affect uh, our satisfaction as designers. Uh, if they do, us more uh, productive and if they boost our creativity. Uh, because uh, with such a lack of tools, uh, we cannot have a fingerprint for human reactions. And then we come up with the thesis statement, uh, that is that we can use uh, tools based on artificial intelligence to design systems that are able to help humans in game design tasks. And we have these uh, four hypotheses that AI will reduce uh, workloads, uh, will increase the accuracy, uh, the computer effect, and the self efficacy So we are why we are interested in these uh, in this hypothesis uh, because so workloads and computer effects uh, they are their levels uh, indicate uh, creativity so if if workload is down and computer effect is high you have room for make people creative accuracy is to help people to be more productive and self efficacy to make them independent to make them feel uh, independent and not need help all the time when they are using their systems so the background of this research, so we have uh, AI in games, uh, artificial intelligence in games. So you all know that I am uh, working with these two things for four years. So no further explanation is required. Next slide. Uh, game analytics. So game analytics, it is uh, when you get uh, data from our game. Uh, and it helps you to understand your users and use this data to improve your own game or to make, for example, the user more acceptable to buy in-game contents and this kind of thing. Uh, as Togilio says, so your game can know more about you than you ever imagined. So take care. Uh, visualization. So uh, this is a, a tool for visualizing how uh, a user, a player is exploring uh, the level design of uh, one of the Rainbow Six games. Uh, gameplay agents, so we have a bunch of gameplay agents, uh, which is artificial intelligence that are able to play the games. So it was very helpful for my thesis. Uh, without them, I probably wouldn't be able to do this work. So this one, uh, it is I think it is our genetic algorithm that is trying to play Frogger. So I put them to play the games and get the data from me. And we have mixed initiative methods. These are actually another kind of AI design assistants. Uh, this one, uh, for example, Roposom uh, was used in a game that was a major hit for uh, mobile games some time ago, uh, Cut the Rope. And what they are, they are uh, the, the combination of humans and algorithms working together to design games. Uh, recommender systems. So yes, I use recommender system in this way that Amazon uses. Uh, for example, when someone buys something, and so for example, you buy something at Amazon, and they recommend you things that other people bought. So yes. Uh, at, at the beginning you, you show, you see, and you can't see a correlation, but uh, for example, why someone is buying books and, and socks at the same time. But yes, actually there is a correlation here, and I am trying to use this approach for game design. Uh, also, in the background, suggestion engines for design assistance. So this is one that you are designing layouts, and uh, at real time, the system the system is suggesting you uh, other kinds of layouts that you could explore, other pictures, other uh, front layouts. Uh, these are industrial tools that uh, it was like a blueprint for 
the tools that we are creating and system evaluation of course because you have to uh, understand how the users uh, are using the systems that we are creating so methods uh, the first of all is VGDL and GVGI framework so VGDL stands for the video game description language and GVGI general video game framework so uh, we designed them to attack the lack of generalities for example uh, this tool, uh, it is as general as possible, so you cannot design 3D tools with this, uh, you cannot, maybe you can, but it's arguable if you can design text adventures, but you can use it for shooter games, for puzzle games, uh, adventure, uh, and you, you can use it for a bunch of game genres, so it is as general as possible, but it's of course, it's more general than other uh, tools that we have available. Uh, Monte Carlo Tree Search uh, is one of the gameplay agents that I was talking before. And this one I have used a lot because it is a good game explorer. So it can explore the whole level and use uh, the functions that I was designed for the game. Uh, it is a good data collector and it has somehow of human-like behavior. Uh, the a priori algorithm was the method used to design the recommender system. So the a priori creates those association rules that if someone buys, uh, for example, a banana, uh, they probably will buy bread and milk, for example. And we used questionnaire-based assessments. Uh, for example, NASA TOX was uh, used for measure workloads, PNAS for effects, computer software figures for independence and now we uh, now I will talk about the tools so Cicero is the main tool of uh, this research so I have a demo here uh, let me see if I can make it work uh, just a second So yes, this is the system, so let me load the game here. This was the first uh, iterator of the system. So in this part here, you have the level design, is where you design your level. Here are the sprites uh, where you define, for example, if you click on this one, you define the behavior that this sprite will have in the game. Uh, when you are design your game you can see that it generates code here and in this area you can simulate the game so I'll simulate it by myself so this is me playing so it's kind of hard because I have a bunch of enemies here but if I put uh, maybe an algorithm to play uh, see without my hands so uh, he can do a uh, way better work let's back to the presentation uh, okay I talked about <coughs> this and, uh, and what does Cicero bring so it brings a game rule uh, status statistics so <coughs> it's so whenever uh, human players play the game <coughs> or agents play the game uh, with these uh, statistics we can see how they explore the, the game uh, design space and then you can see, for example, if you have uh, rules like this one uh, down below that are never used, maybe you should remove them. Because uh, what is the point of keeping uh, space there if, if no one is exploring it? Uh, we also have a visualization system in the in way of heat maps. So here you can see a uh, heat map of space invaders. You can see the enemies on top. Uh, so the darker uh, the lighter green as shows that there is a lot of uh, enemies on that area and in blue you see how the the human player or the agent is moving uh, sequence so sequence is a game replace uh, analysis so it means that you can play a game and whenever you stop the game you can go back and forth you can see uh, what you have done uh, by like a YouTube video so I have a a demo of here, uh, a demo of sequence. <coughs> Let me see if I can 
but it's to run. So for example, let me play this game again. <coughs> So, okay, I, I died already. Okay, but let's use sequence. So sequence, uh, it stores uh, the things that I just did. And okay, let me put. So at this point, I probably it's the point that I'll be killed. So let's export this frame. And now, let me remove this enemy. And let me remove this one. Let me stop. <coughs> and then I make the things easier for me. Now, yes, I died again. Uh, okay, let me down. Let me use the sequence again. So because I was very close to, to finish the level. So let me just back one frame. Okay, uh, let me export it. So let me put this, oh, not here. Uh, let me put this agent. And, oh, it crashes. Okay, but uh, you got the idea. So yes, I can, let me back to work. I can use sequence and play it back and forth. And, uh, it will do the work for me. So, uh, we published this paper two years ago, and recently, uh, Nintendo, they... Oh, oh okay. that's terrible. <coughs> oh. So, thank you, Chris. So yes, uh, Nintendo, they they implemented some sort of sequence in their systems, and now they are using it for uh, the Nintendo Switch, uh, for the uh, Nintendo 8-bit games and the Super NES. I'm not saying that Nintendo is copying me, but... <laughs> <laughs> yes, and it's also uh, used for uh, training people, for example, uh, these games like uh, League of Legends and World of Maps, where they take people engage in maps uh, to defeat each other. Uh, people they use it to use uh, this kind of systems to watch other matches and improve they, themselves as players. Uh, query. So, query it is a database for game events. So you can query events uh, by asking the database for uh, what, when, who, and where uh, event happened, and then the system uh, will show will show it to you. Uh, I have uh, so, for example, you can let's say you have people playing Mario, and you want to know if um, Mario is able to kill a Goomba at this point of the level. Uh, or you can uh, see if people are able to find the energy tank uh, in the Super Metroid level. So you don't have to wait and see uh, if uh, a whole video just to see if it happens. You just ask the system and the system will uh, answer with you with a yes or no. And it will show you if uh, the event happens or it doesn't happen. So it just use it for debug assistance that I will show you uh, uh, a couple of slides ahead and it was used uh, for at the, uh, at the file there is a game uh, tutorial generator so uh, at, at the file teaches you how to play a game and in the background uh, when it's generated the tutorial it's using the uh, events database event storage to store the events and organize them and in a way that you can watch the sequence and see the events that you need to do to win the game. So this is just the whole explanation how it happens. So when an event happens, it will see who is involved, uh, where the X and Y positions, uh, the number of the, the frame in the game. And then uh, it will uh, go to the, to the rules of the game and store everything in the database so you can uh, ask later and then you can ask by using this uh, graphical user interface 
and it will show the events in a panel. You click on the panel, and it will show you uh, how the things happens in the game. So now it is uh, Pitaco. So Pitaco is a recommended system for game design. So the first attempt of Pitaco was um, a paper that we call by Shopping for Game Mechanics. Uh, it was based on sprite comparison and ranking of similarities. But the results, they showed little variation and lack of information and a very poor graphical interface. And there is no point of using a, a recommended system if whenever you are using it, it will recommend you the same thing over and over again. So it, it's uh, a problem. And also, uh, the lack of information, you were getting the recommendation and you had no idea about why that thing was being recommended for you. <coughs> so uh, the users, they, they were totally in dark. So this was the graphical user interface. And then we uh, designed a second attempt that is based on a priori and mining frequent item sets that I showed you before. So, and then we use a technique that uh, we call by game design breakdown. So the idea is you get the description of a game. So uh, this is the description of Sokoban. So you break it down in the minimal possible description of the game, the uh, atomic elements. And then when you have everything uh, broke, you organize them in a game catalog. So you have everything, uh, everything categorized in this category. So you can get all the elements from uh, different games. You can combine them and you can gener generate other games. So this is uh, the same principle that is used in the game industry or that the uh, game industry people use it to get atomic elements, combine them and create new elements and also in biology. And also, uh, <coughs> Super Smash Bros, uh, they have done it. So you have a fighting game, and they did a crossover. Uh, when you get uh, information from another game, there is a bong, and they combine each other. So you have a fighting game, and I don't, don't know what genre bong belongs, but you have two games uh, crossing over uh, together. So I'm not saying that Nintendo is copying me, but... <laughs> and also, uh, Pitaco, uh, of course, it needs a new graphical user interface. So let me see if I can put it to, to run here. Because, okay, let me start it again. So this is when you start the system and you don't have uh, anything. So, and then you are trying to design a game. So, but the system is totally cold. So it doesn't have enough data for you. And then it will suggest you uh, these uh, sprites because they are the most popular in the sprites that we have in the games available. So I'll pick this one. So here I have more, more information about <coughs> what is uh, recommended to me. So I can see that this guy, it can shoot. Uh, this one, I can see it is a flat avatar. Uh, but I will pick this one. And when I get this sprite, I see it came with a sprite attached. Because from the game that I am uh, extracting this sprite, uh, this is, let me see how it behaves. Okay, I can move it, I can shoot, okay, but let's see uh, what I have more. So because I, I picked that sprite, I got new recommendations, I got a bunch of them, okay, so let me see which uh, this one, jaws, does it cast a jaw? Uh, okay, let me pick this one. Oh no, it, it casts a piranha. Okay, I don't like fish, by the way. I mean, I don't like to, to eat them, but... Okay, let's see what 
Big Bay E2? That's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, okay. Yes, it's okay. Okay, I cannot kill them. Uh, go away. Okay. So, yes. Uh, let's go to the recommender. And now that I have this sprite, uh, let's ask for interactions. Let me see if I can get a good interaction here. Uh, I don't want to step back. Let me see. Bullet, bullet doesn't make sense to me. Uh, okay. Bullet, piranha, uh, Q sprite. Okay. okay, let me get this one. So, when the two elements collide, they will kill uh, each other. So, it makes sense for this game. Let's see. It's running. Okay. Where is the piranha? He's afraid of me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now I don't have problems anymore. So I can kill them. So yes, let's me back to the presentation. So that's how the, the recommender system works. Right, you have uh, you have uh, in one side you have uh, this is the game that you are designing, and these are the recommendations. So you just need to see uh, which ones makes more sense for uh, what you are trying to do, and you pick them. And also. Uh, not sure if you can see, but all the recommendations they come with a confidence level. So the conf the confidence level is part of the uh, a priori algorithm and the uh, association rules it brings. So every recommendation has this confidence level, and uh, as higher the confidence level is, you probably will end up to design a clone, design a game that uh, already exists. But if the confidence level is low, you probably will uh, gonna end with something that is not explored yet, with something new. But we are not creating a weapon of map destruction here. Uh, we are not saying that people should get the higher confidence or the lower confidence. As a designer, it's up to you. As a, a, a user, it's up to you. You explore the system and the way you feel it sweets you better. Oh, oh, what's happening? Uh, okay, sorry about that. So, yes, I, I just have a video, but I showed you the, the demo already. So, the video was just, just in case if the, the system was broken. And we also have uh, this prototype for recommended placing positions because so now you have uh, you have the elements and you have the, inter the interactions you have all the rules and now we suggest you uh, places to put uh, the sprites on the level. Uh, for example, here you have uh, four recommendations. So for example, this one maybe it's a very good one because the crab will be uh, right next to the key so it works as a protector so you will have some kind of difficulty when you're trying to get the key and now we'll come to the part of the system evaluation so uh, keep in mind that all the evaluation that i have done i had two groups uh, the first group uh, they did the tasks without any kind of assistance so I called them by the no AI. And the other group, uh, they have done the tasks uh, with AI assistance. So I call the AI group. So the first uh, evaluation was an AI debug assistance. So the hypothesis is that uh, AI will increase human accuracy uh, in game debugging uh, tasks. And the first test that we designed, uh, that was taken by 32 participants, 
was invisible barriers in Space Invaders. So for example, we designed a level like this one and some of the barriers could never be destroyed uh, no matter uh, what you or the, the enemies tried to do. And so the users, they had to play the game uh, and try to find these bugs. And in the end, they have to point uh, <coughs> Uh, which of which one of these barriers could never be destroyed? And the people with the AI assistance, they had to play the same level, but watching the AI playing the game. And then in the end, they had to say the same thing: uh, which ones could never be destroyed? So for the results, uh, we had that uh, the humans they were three times more accurate. Uh, I mean, the humans with AI assistance. They were three times more accurate. Uh, it reduced the, the number of wrong choices, and the precision, pre precision, and the recall uh, was 20 and 60 percent uh, higher, uh, respectively. The sun is hitting you, right? <laughs> and we also had this uh, second task: uh, fake walls. So not this kind of fake things. <laughs> So, fake walls in video games, fake walls that allow you to go through it. So that is a, a bug, especially if you are designing a, a labyrinth game. Uh, you will have more chairs if you want to see. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Share for you. And for this kind of game, the results were very, very close. Uh, we couldn't say that there was a winner uh, if the AI group or the no AI group. So, uh, the point is for the other game, uh, there is a space invaders there is a, there is a game that requires uh, dexterity so ai is very good it's very good for help you in this task of game debugging but for a game that requires you to come up with a strategy of debugging the game so the ai is close to random uh, because the algorithm was designed to beat the game and so what is trying to do it is beat the game uh, by any means. Maybe it come up uh, with something that will help you to, to find a bug, but for cases that you need to come up with the, the strategy, uh, it's very hard. And then the second, uh, uh, the second evaluation was for the game design assistance, uh, Pitaco, the recommender system. Uh, the hypothesis is that Pitaco decreases the workloads, increases the accuracy, the computational effect and the self efficacy So for this one, the task was design space invaders, and I had uh, 87 participants in two groups. Uh, just a second. And I have a video here. It is it is showing a comparison of the humans with assistance and the humans without assistance. So, we don't need to see ev everything. And this uh, is one of your uh, users, uh, this recording? Yes, th this is myself. Ah, okay. But it's just an illustration of the workload of the things that you, you need to do. Uh, for example, if you... So, I came to this part, right? By doing everything uh, right uh, at this part, I am already able to <coughs> play the game. But by using uh, a tool without any kind of assistance, I am still on the <coughs> first part. I am still designing the, uh, the sprites, and I am still taking care of the behaviors. So, for it will take this long to come up with the same level uh, with having uh, AI assistance. <coughs> And yes, for workloads, uh, after using the NASA TOLX and apply a Wilcoxon Whitney test, we found the statistical significance for these four dimensions uh, insecurity, mental workloads, uh, physical workload, and temporal demands. They are <coughs> uh, always very down if someone is designing a game uh, with a AI assistance. For Levels of perceived success, uh, we couldn't find statistical significance, but these are the graphs. Uh, in blue, we have the, the people in the AI group. Uh, these are the level of, su of success they reported. 
Uh, for computational effects, we applied the uh, PNAS and again with uh, Wilcox and Whitney, and we could find the statistical significance for people with AI assistance. The experience uh, was way more positive, but for people with uh, without AI assistance, it has all these 20 dimensions. So these are the means. And to, to show you uh, the dimensions that AI win, all these levels are, are better uh, with AI. Uh, these are the levels that the no AI group uh, got better, uh, enthusiasm, proud, alert. And these are the tools that we have no wins, scary and determined. Uh, this is the level of accuracy. So I should have another slide here, but by accuracy, I mean, I mean, uh, so because they had to design Space Invaders, we required them to use uh, 12 rules of the game. And they have to, do, to design these rules uh, one group with assistance, another group without assistance. So the maximum score that you could achieve uh, in this task uh, was 12. So, and then you can see that uh, the AI group, that is the one in blue, uh, it was uh, way better than the one uh, without any kind of assistance. And you can also see that on the other side of the graph, uh, the people with, the, with no assistance, they they struggle with the tool. They they could they couldn't be able even to do one rule, uh, one uh, one of the twelve twelve rules that we asked them to do. So for self efficacy so uh, both groups they reported values that were too similar, and applying the, the statistical test they will will Coxon Whitney we couldn't find uh, uh, any statistical significance. So we couldn't come to the conclusion of uh, which group is the winner, if it is the uh, AI group or the no AI group. So this is something that need, needs to be improved. And uh, speaking about improvements, we are and the game tools they can and they need to be better. Enter AI assisted game design, but they like generalities and they like user studies. And then we uh, came up with this thesis statement that we can use this tool for design systems that are able to help humans in game design tasks. And then we designed uh, a bunch of systems, uh, systems based in visualization, systems based on uh, databases, uh, recommender systems. Uh, we evaluated uh, these systems uh, in total with 119 participants. And we could find that, uh, for example, for uh, Pitaco, we could find that the work workload is reduced when people have uh, AI assistance. Uh, for accuracy, we could see that uh, using AI debug assistance and using a recommender system to a recommender systems to design a game, uh, we could see that the accuracy is increased. For computational effects, uh, also for Pitaco, we could see that people feel more uh, affected by uh, using AI assistance than the people with, without assistance. And for self efficacy uh, we could find uh, our winner. We, could, we can't say that uh, AI or no AI is better. <coughs> so for future work, uh, we want to expand uh, this idea of AI assistance to other domains and we want to run other uh, VGDL and GVG AI tools uh, for example at Delphi that I, I talked before or the level generator tool uh, inside CISO that was the main tool that we designed for this thesis so that's all I, I hope you like it and now we have time for questions So we have time for public questions from the audience, and then we'll browse in the committee. We'll probably with all the questions after the private session. So I think we want to complete. Uh, I had a question about the uh, that confidence vendor that you talked about. I think with mm -hmm. the Taco project. Mm -hmm. um, is that right? Um, 
So you said that the higher confidence that I have, like for each rule, the larger chance that I have that I'm, I'm copying, a, sorry, for, for each mm. sprite or rule, mm. the higher chance mm. that it's like a direct copy from another game. Yeah. So does that confidence number change? Like that, that number is calculated for each individual thing that I'm inserting in the game, or is it just kind of widespread, like you're this, uh, this much like Space Invaders, and this rule's coming from Space Invaders, so, or, you know what I mean? Like, is it yes, just like yeah. a one-time yeah. number, or is it yeah. always yeah. constantly being recalculated? Uh, it is recalculated. So it is based on your uh, game design structure. Okay. So, for example, in Victory DOL, you have the <coughs> sprite sets that are the uh, rules of the behaviors of the sprites, right. and you have the interactive sets that are the rules when the sprites collide with each other. So we we have a library of games, so we try uh, to find patterns uh, that are similar to yours. Okay. Uh, and whenever we find these patterns, uh, they come with a confidence level. Uh, because so uh, this is your input, right? Here, here is your game design. Your output will be a set of association rules, uh, things that will make sense to put in the design that you already have. And these things that make sense are based on other things that are already available. Right. And then we have a large set, and in this large set we have high confidence and low confidence. Gotcha. And then it is up to you. Maybe you are trying to design a new kind of Tetris. Right. So it makes sense that, let's say, 8% of the rules needs to be copied, copied for the Tetris game that you already have available. Okay. Cool. Um, you had a set of three slides that I think is actually talking about the same data where you say whether AI or no AI sort of wins the analysis. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, okay, right. Um, when you say wins, um, does that mean that um, there were uh, higher values or lower values that just change based uh, on the it, it, of it changes. Uh, okay. For example, uh, in the case of interests, yeah. uh, AI wins because the interest of the people with assistance uh, is higher than the people without assistance. So you sort of classify some of those in yeah. positive traits. Yeah, those. yeah exactly. But for, uh, for example, irritability, they, uh, the people with the AI group wins if the values are lower. Okay. I'm just curious, when you say people use the AI without the system, the AI system creates a system medium, you say some people will not see or do what this means, they can do anything, just like, okay, they, we have left. Yes, they, <laughs> they, they weren't able to do anything. They just uh, sent to me a text file that is totally nonsense. They, they tried to do the game and maybe they gave up and they clicked on everything. They tried to come up with something and they struggled with the tool and probably they say, no, I, enough for me. Just, I'm just done. Did they know their rules in advance, the 12 rules? Mm -hmm. uh, so they they were like going to check if they met them? Uh, no, no, they don't need to check. Uh, when when I got the rules, I I put the, the txt file on a file com comparison tool that has a, a skeleton, and whenever it matches, it uh, counts one point. Further questions? This is your time. This is just random. This is a, can I ask a, a question that's not exactly, okay. So. You ask, you ask questions first and you ask questions later. Like, you're right, I'll put yeah. your yeah. Um, uh, Do you think that like the confidence tool could be used to do an analysis on all GBGAI games like current and future to see if there's a huge difference between like, what the spread looks like? So, so can say again? Like this, this the way that you're comparing these games to each other. I'm wondering if there's like a, a really cool project there. Oh, so you basically you look at every single game compared to every other game and say how different are these games from all and the other how games? unlikely are the rules? Exactly. Uh, 
That'd be a cool analysis. Yeah. Like using the what you build for this, yeah. I think there's also a use yeah. there as well. And that goes for like future games that you want to make too. This yeah. is what you're right. doing already, right? Yeah. You can assign a number and be like, this is this unique. This is this is how unlikely this game is. How right. like, what is this particular thing? Like, well, the only weakness is that you have to recalculate that number every time a new game gets added yeah. to the framework. But yeah. whenever you put a new game in the library, you will reca recalculate Yeah, you got to do it all again. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. Well, that's right. That's a cool, cool yeah. idea. That's, when are you submitting the paper? Any questions or comments right now? Yeah, I'll If not, then um, we'll move into the closed session. So before you rise up, I forgot to say before that after the defense, we'll have a little reception down in the Game Animation Lab on the sixth floor, which most, well, well, half of the people in this room will know where it is and we'll have to get there, um, uh, where there will be grapes and mm -hmm. things. So. Yeah. Um, um, but for now, we'll uh, move to a session with considerably fewer people in the room.